Hi there, I'm John from CNCROI.com and today we're going to make a custom metal stencil. My company makes a lot of custom stencils for a huge variety of different applications. Today what we'll do, we'll take a look at the water jet cutting out this stencil here. Out of steel, you can see how thin it is and how incredibly strong it is at that. Now the nice thing about the water jet uh, when it comes to doing metal work like this is that basically even very fine details like the inside of here can be very very sharp. It's not as sharp as what the laser would produce but it's more cost effective on the other way around. Now you do sort of pay for that because after this comes out of the water jet it's been wet and it's metal so when you take it out you get a uh, flash rust then that requires us to sandblast it. So let's take a look at the water jet making this first and then we'll go through each process for that. water jet is finished cutting this out, it's time to sandblast it. Sandblasting removes any residues or rust that occur over the surface of this because again it is metal, it did go in water and that water has a lot of metal on it because basically what you're doing is using water and sand to cut metal so you end up with a lot of little part particles inside of the water uh, that this sort of sits into uh, with metal. So you have oxidization, you have lots of issues going on in there. So that's why we do the sandblasting. Sandblasting gives it a nice even uh, gray coat, so to speak. And we have done projects where basically we just leave it like that and we just seal it, as you saw earlier with the shop sign here. So this has been sandblasted and right off the bat uh, cleaned and then a clear coat was applied to it. And so you don't have that issue anymore because you have a barrier between the oxygen or the atmosphere and the metal underneath. So even if this gets wet, it won't oxidize. Let's cut another stencil out. Uh, so this is a project I did probably about two years ago and I just had it in the shop. It's just a plywood stencil and I just painted this blue to give it more contrast and I put one stencil inside of the other one. Now let's say uh, for visuals if I wanted to I could put this inside of a plywood stencil like I could mix and match the CNC's uh, to produce different results. 
So if I wanted all of these inside parts here to actually be metal, like this here, that would be no problem at all because I just optimized the file between the CNC's to be optimal uh, to fill it out properly. So let's take a look at the laser producing this. one machine for one material and another machine for another material or we mix and match different materials for different processes to produce something for our customers. In this case here let's just have a quick think about it. We also have a CNC router. So if I was to do this with a CNC router it would be a really jagged edge because basically you have a spinning bit that's going through the metal and it's just chattering everywhere. So right off the bat generally I would not use the CNC router to produce something like this out of metal. Now, couldn't this be done with a laser? Yes, but the water jet is far more cost effective than using a laser to cut metal, at least at the kilowatts we're dealing with here and the water pressures. Now, let's go with plywood. Can I make this with a CNC router? Absolutely, not a problem. Uh, I don't see anything here that could not be CNC routed. Now, if I use the laser, as you saw, it's just cut and ship. With the CNC router, there's a lot more setup because it's a process where you're holding the material down so that the bit can cut all the way through uh, exactly like this. Now the other thing you gotta keep in mind is that with the laser, the beam is roughly the thickness of a, of a hair, probably even less. So in this case here, all I had to do was cut this out twice and then I was able to mix and match the two stencils with zero waste. If I use a CNC router to do this, I'd actually be sacrificing the inside of all of this so I'd actually have to cut it four times to be able to produce two stencils uh, in the similar design to this. Now this is plywood. Can I put plywood in a water jet? Absolutely, there's no problem with it. The only issue is that when plywood gets wet it gets really, uh, it becomes really awful, you get mold issues, you get a lot of problems with it. So technically yes, water jet can totally do this. Uh, realistically, you don't want to do it that way. 
So let's go with a different material. Let's say uh, Corian. Uh, Corian, we can CNC router it, but again, you end up with the same issue where you're making four stencils to produce two uh, with the router. Laser, not very cost effective. Uh, water jet really comes into its own on that one there. So different processes require different machines to produce optimal results. And that's what I like to tell my customers um, all around the world that, you know, I need to know what you're going to be using this stencil here for. If it's just a weekend job where you're stenciling, I don't know, a wall um, just one time, this is probably not your most, most cost effective way of doing it. Uh, usually for those processes there, we use polycarbonate. Polycarbonate is transparent and we could do it with the laser. So we have the advantage of the laser in that we can produce stencils within stencils and the nesting to go with that. Um, but you can also see through it so you know where you're putting your work. Let's say you're doing a wall mirror and you're doing a thousand of them. This is definitely the way to go. You can't see through it, but it just requires a little bit more setup. And this will last pretty much as long as you could, you know, I, I don't see this ever wearing out uh, for most applications. Now, as you saw, we can also do text. So here's another sort of stencil. This is a sign, but actually it can be the same as a stencil. One thing you want to keep in mind with custom stencils that we produce for you is the inside of letters. So here you see a P, here you see an O. You notice this little part here, there's tabs holding it. So when, whenever we do stencils, I always tell my customer, what do you can do with the inside parts? And then you get, you know, a light shines up and go, oh yeah, I forgot about that. There's a B, there's a P, there's a whole bunch of letters that you want to keep the inside part. One way around that, if you're just using this once, is to put double-sided tape, which we could produce here. And you just put it together, then you spray paint it, then you take it off. But it's far easier to use a stencil or a font or little pieces of metal or paper or plastic, whatever you want us to produce the stencil in, just to hold it in for you. So if you're looking for custom stencils, any material, any shape, any size, contact me at cncroi.com.